it fantastic? I'm so impressed to be here and I was so impressed by Garage talk. Um, it's really interesting, I think, and one of the best things about being here is the chance to hear everybody else speak and all of the fantastic things that they're saying. I feel like I'm learning so much already. This is a really important topic. This one, <laughs> creating our future together. I mean, the future just happens, right? Or do we create it? Well, we'd like to create it. We'd like to be involved. We'd like to have some role to play in that. Um, and if we do, we have to understand creativity because to create, we have to be creative. How important is creativity? People think it's something to do with the arts, but that's just one of its expressions. The essence of creativity is problem solving. And you can't underestimate problem solving. It leads to social change, to cultural change, to political development, to economic progression. It's the baseline for inventiveness and innovation and entrepreneurship, things that we really value. When we think about children in relation to this, we think, what role do they have to play? Uh, Whitney Houston, of course, said it best, that children are the future. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing. But if we believe that, then we have to put them into the picture and think, what role do they have? Um, today's teenagers are going to be the workers and leaders of tomorrow. The children born in the maternity hospital this week, in the blink of an eye, they're going to be running this country. We have to really think about what we're teaching them and what they know and whether they're going to be in a position to meet the challenges, the massive challenges that the future is going to pose for them. So what is creativity? As I said, it's really the essence of problem solving, inventiveness, innovation, entrepreneurship. It can be expressed in so many different ways. It can be expressed through the arts, through business, through the social sciences. There is no field that creativity doesn't apply to. But this is the key question, when does it develop? I work in higher education as a lecturer in IT Sligo, and they come in mostly age 18, 19. We take innovation, creativity, entrepreneurship very seriously. It runs through our programs. And we're working on this with the students. And it always strikes me that some of them are really, really great at this. And some not so great. They all come in at a level. You work with them and everybody rises. But the ones that start with this high level, the things that they can go on to are amazing. They would amaze you. So you look at what they're coming in with. And they have things that we can't really teach them because it's too late unless they have it. Things like tenacity. Things like the ability to take risks. Things like seeing failure as an opportunity to learn. You know, by 18 you have that or you don't. It's so much a part of you. It's almost part of your personality at that stage. So that got us thinking, when does it happen? We started to work with secondary schools. We have an entrepreneurship scholarship but it's almost too late then too. It's younger, younger these things happen. It's in the primary school years and in the preschool years that this really, really happens, that you become a type of person who has a skill set where you have self-belief and self-confidence and things like tenacity that are so important, the ability to take risks, so important for your later ability to innovate. How does it develop? That really is what we want to know. So, I think it develops when we're children through play. I think that when we think of our childhood, you know, we think of playing, we think of outdoor play, we think of being away from the adults and having fun. You know, did you have that type of childhood? Get out and come back when you're hungry, you know? Or better still, take sandwiches with you. No, the, that was great, you know, off we went, we found our pals, we had great fun, you know, clubs and making the rules for clubs and building the clubhouse, you know, sometimes in a tree. You know, there was no adult around to say, that's too high, that's dangerous, don't do that. You know, stop fighting, shake hands, make up. You had to resolve your own conflicts. You had to do everything yourself. You learned so many skills with that freedom in play where you really, really developed this skill set. You know what you were interested in, you followed it, you were tenacious, you had decision-making, you had leadership, 
There was lots and lots of things happening in that time that are really, really important for you later on, but whether you're going to be a really creative professional in whatever field you choose, whether it's the arts or whether it's business. Do you remember your childhood? Did you have that childhood? Did you have freedom? Did you have fun? Did you climb trees? I hope so. Because if you did, then you have within you the skill set to be a really creative person. What about today's children? Do they have it? I spent the summer working on a na nationwide neighborhood play project where we were observing neighborhood play up and down the country, cross-border, all, all uh, provinces. And children today aren't playing like, like we used to play. They're not. There's an adult involvement running through everything. So there is an adult there all the time, or a lot of the time, saying, don't do that, that's dangerous. And I worry that we're creating a risk-averse generation. You know, um, they're going off in the morning to school. They start school at four. They start crashes at six months. We've created a society where children are in institutions from very early on. Now, we all have to work, I know that. Um, but what is happening when they do that is really important. So where we had freedom, they have structure. They have a very adult agenda from very young where they're in classes, they're doing a lot of tabletop learning, a lot of formal learning, um, a lot of priorities around numeracy and literacy, which are very important things, but less focus on things like creativity. Um, they come home from school, and a lot of times there's structured activities. You know, we know this, there's a lot of soccer, a lot of rugby, great things. There's a lot of dance classes, there's a lot of different structured activities, evenings and weekends. So they're all valuable, but when do they have time to actually play and experience the real learning that will give them the creativity skill set that can only really develop in those years? Birthday parties used to be brilliant. You know, they used to be really, really anything could happen kind of events. Do you remember your birthday parties? You know, really, really good fun. But there wasn't, um, there wasn't magicians and there wasn't clowns and there wasn't even a bouncy castle at any of ours. Um, I remember one birthday party, my mother made me a cake out of Swiss rolls, six Swiss rolls in a row. She said it was a train. I thought she was a genius. <laughs> I, I was so impressed. We were so easily pleased. Um, and we, now we've reached this stage where we feel like we have to entertain them, that they're incapable of making their own fun, which I think um, is a terrible pity and that we're losing something. So if we have lost the traditional method of developing creativity, how serious is that for our future generation, our future society? I'd imagine it's quite serious if we think of creativity as the baseline for social change, political development, economic progression, innovation, entrepreneurship. So, how can we bring it back? Can we bring it back? I think that education has a key role to play in bringing it back. So, if they're spending all of this time in institutions, then the institutions have to step up to the mark, starting with the creche. So in your creche, you have teachers and toys. So teachers, practitioners, educators, whatever you want to call the adult that is in the creche working with your children. They have to be a very mindful and aware and reflective person to see what's happening in their classroom and to value each child individually and to see that they can pass over control to the children and be less controlling around, we're doing this now and we're doing it for this length of time that there can be more fun, that there can be more freedom, that can become more child-led activities. Toys. Toys are a big deal. If you walk into any creche, toys, toys, as far as the eye can see, brilliant, I, you're probably saying in your head, but it's not really. Because toys, most toys, are plastic, and you press a button and they do one thing, flashing lights and all of that. 
you know, and it looks great for 20 seconds, but then what? What is it? Whereas that age is the most creative age. Anyone who knows a child of that age knows how creative they are, how much imagination they have. They pick up a stick, and that stick can be a horse. The next minute, it can be a doll. The next minute, it can be an arrow in a bow or a sword. They can use it to make a house. They can use it to make anything. They pick up a sheet. They call it a cape, and it's a cape. To them, they are that imaginative, that creative. And we've all of these toys that only do one thing and that take that from them. We're not giving them something with these toys. We're taking something away, I worry. So on to the next level, which is the preschool year and the infant classes, junior infants, senior infants. What we need to do here is open-ended projects. Open-ended projects where something is started, the teacher has no idea how it's going to end. It's really the way to go. There's risk built in because anything can happen. There's fun built in because the children are in control and children will always choose what they enjoy. And when they're having fun, they are learning. It's almost um, a measure, it's almost a yardstick for are they learning, is are they enjoying themselves? Because that engagement, that flow, they're right in the middle of it. Um, and a love of learning. Now, I cannot emphasize this enough. We know that in HE, in higher education, that one of the important things in relation to creativity is knowledge. Knowledge that is field specific. If you're an engineer, there's things you have to know. If you're a doctor, there's things you have to know. If you're a business person, there's things you have to know. Everybody has their field. And everybody's field, they have to know their knowledge set within it. To get there, you have to love learning. So we have a problem with people who, who, whom, for whom education doesn't work. And it's because they haven't developed that love of learning, which develops in these years. So we have things that we want them to know, but the most important thing we want them to develop is to actually love learning. So an example of this, the one way you can do this, is through the literacy agenda, where we focus on learning your alphabet and tracing out your letters and reading and taking it seriously and, you know, real focus on all of that. And it can be quite stressful for a young child, you know, the worry that maybe they're not learning it fast enough. If we pushed all of that out a little bit and read them stories and, you know, really let them enjoy storytelling and as the story unfolds and the drama and the wonder of it all, if they got that sense of excitement from a story and what a story can mean, then they would love to read when the time comes. And we might have a generation, I don't know how many of you work in, in higher education, but one of the things that we have is uh, all of my students can read, no problem, but not all of them love reading. It can be a bit of a chore. I think that might go back to when learning to read was stressful rather than pleasurable. So I think that we should be focusing on pleasure and love of learning instead of specific learning outcomes which are going to come anyway, given a bit more time. Moving in then to the primary school years. As adults, we can compartmentalize our learning. You know, we can learn history on its own and geography on its own, biology on its own. But children unify their learning. So instead of separating subjects, we should learn about something and bring all the subjects into it. So we can learn about a festival and you've got cultural learning, geography, you've got history. If you do the cooking, that goes with that festival, you've got some scientific learning, you've got to integrate and unify learning in these years. Um, group and paired projects are fantastic for this age group, you know, where um, instead of it being a teacher telling that there is a, a learning outcome given to the class, they divide into groups and pairs and they all come up with different ways of meeting it. So you have lots of creativity in the room and lots of individuality and value for that. The third thing here is democracy, and that relates to that too, that teachers really need to hand control over to their students and trust their intrinsic wisdom because children are made to learn. and They have intrinsic wisdom around learning. And if, they do, if there's democracy in the classroom, the teacher can say, look, this is our curriculum outcomes for this class. This is what we're supposed to learn. How shall we do it? And they will give him or her so much more ideas than they would ever come up with themselves as one person. And there will be great creativity and great learning in the classroom. And with all of that, there is risk built in because the teacher doesn't know what's going to happen and anything can happen. And um, the risk 
in that is very exciting and makes it real. Which leads us to what kind of teachers do we really need? We need very open people. We need people who are creative in themselves, who are in touch with all of this. And we need them to be reflective. We need them to understand the depth of what they're working with. There are implications, obviously, in relation to educational policy with student teacher selection, with teacher training, with in-service training. We also have to consider things like class sizes. You know, we're living in a situation at the moment where class sizes are increasing. I'm not saying that they should or they shouldn't. I'm just saying that that needs to be considered. And if they are going to increase, we need to be very creative around how we meet a creativity agenda within bigger class sizes. We also need to think about things like our priorities. What are our priorities in relation to education? I really feel that creativity is massively important, yet maybe largely ignored. We have a numeracy and literacy strategy. We have no creativity strategy, and maybe we should. Because the big question, if we do believe that children are the future, is what skills do they really, really need to create it? Thank you very much.